Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ren. In this channel, I share knowledge and practical techniques on everything about mental health. And in this video, I wanted to talk about boundaries. Lacking healthy boundary is almost one of the most important indicators of codependency. Because when one person is codependent, when one person is externally focused, they have not learned to be comfortable with themselves. They have not learned the definition of themselves. Boundary starts with self-definition. One must know that where a self starts and where oneself ends. But mostly it was manifested in external relationships. So today I wanted to talk about the definition of boundary and why it is important for us to have personal boundaries and how healing personal boundary can really effectively contributes to our recovery for codependency. When we understand boundaries, we understand that boundaries exist in relationships. It's relationship with other people. But first, it starts with oneself. Boundary first and foremost starts with oneself. Boundary is the definition of oneself. For example, what I like, what I don't like, how I feel, what I'm thinking, what's my responsibility and what's not my responsibility, what's my preference, what's my desires, what's my outlook in life. And everything honestly about me, what, how I feel, is my boundary. So a personal violation of boundary is when I don't like something, but I tell people I like it because I was trying to go along with other people. It actually goes against with my personal integrity. When we go against our personal integrity, we feel guilt, we feel shame, we feel a lot of internal conflicts and complicated negative feelings because we know that we are violating our own boundary. So it doesn't mean that having a personal boundary that you have to go push against the world. It just means that you are honest and you are very authentic in yourself as a presence. When it's manifested in relationships, having a healthy boundary means that you allow yourself to unfold honestly as yourself without being changed, without being controlled by other people unwillingly when you don't want to. It's also the other way around. When you're trying to control and change the other person, you are changing the reality. You are changing, you are violating their boundaries. We are violating the definition of themselves. A lot of us have unrealistic expectations about boundaries, which means that there shouldn't be conflicts when we're going against each other, when we're having, like operating from different value system, when we're having different thoughts or feelings or stand about something. We have to accept that there will be differences because everybody is different. There's nothing in the world that's absolutely symmetric, right? So when we are facing conflicts, having a healthy boundary means that accepting the difference, accepting that you are having your own boundary and I have my own boundary. We don't have to change each other. We can allow comfortably the other to exist in their own definition. For example, you know that your parents wanted you to go to medical school. They wanted you to maybe go to law school because they feel like it's good for you. But having a healthy boundary of yourself means that you allow the difference to exist. You allow, you understand that, well, they won't be happy for me to choose to be a vlogger, but I accept this difference. I accept that they operate from their own definition and I operate from mine. And it's okay to have both realities validated. It doesn't make them wrong. It doesn't make me wrong. It just means that I wanted to respect my own boundary. You know, I go about and do my own things anyways without being changed or surrendered to being controlled by them. So why is it important to have boundaries? A lot of experts in codependency have talked about the definition of codependence, right? They talk about why codependents become codependents when they grow up. Firstly, they have a dysfunctional relationship with themselves because 
they are not able to validate their own reality. They are not comfortable being who they are without being externally focused. For example, when we're children, we are doomed to survive with our parents, with our caretakers, because without them, there's no way we can live and take care of ourselves as children. Our definition of the world is taught by them. Our definition of relationship is taught by them. So as children, we need to be taken care of by our parents, by our caregivers. So we mirror how they feel about us when we don't have a definition of ourselves. For example, when we are a toddler, we have no idea that how the world exists. We have no idea how we exist, right? We have to mirror how our parents give positive response to us. They give us smile, they give us patience, they take care of our needs when we're upset. But when none of those um, needs or desires are met consistently with care, it could give this child this signal that they are not important to be taken care of and they would develop this crazy fear that they could have died somehow. And this fear is deeply rooted. So children born with this adaptability have to adapt to their parents' reality. They have to learn how to make their parents happy. They have to learn to not say something, not do something, not show emotions, not be naughty, so their parents can happy, so that they can survive in this household. And in order to do this, they have to bury who they are at core. They have to bury their own identity. And when they do this, they're going against their personal boundaries, right? They are being violated because they are subjected to their parents. They are surrendering to their parents' reality. For example, when I was a child, I knew that I shouldn't cause trouble because my dad, he doesn't have this patience to deal with me. And my mom is so emotionally unavailable because she's so depressed. She doesn't have time to take care of my needs. I learned, of course, I didn't learn to take care of my own needs because as children, we couldn't meet our own needs. But I learned to not have those needs. At least I've learned to bury those needs. I learned to not say I'm hungry. I learned to not show my anxiety, show my fear, show my emotions at any circumstances. I would go along with whoever is around me because having a different reality, having my own feelings or emotions are not okay. It means that I'm wrong. It means that I'm defected. So that's how I've learned to abandon my own boundary, to adapt to their reality, to adapt to their boundaries. I allow my boundaries to be pushed, to be violated. And that's how I became a people pleaser. That's how I became a codependent because I don't accept my own reality. I have to go along with whatever people are feeling because I don't trust my instincts. I don't trust my body feelings. I don't trust myself to take care of myself. So when we are going against our personal reality, we are abandoning ourselves and we don't feel safe within our body because we already did it once, right? We already did abandon ourselves for our parents and we just continue to not trust ourselves, to not trust that we could make our life work. Another detrimental side effect is that when we allow ourselves to be pushed around by other people, they learn to take advantage of us. In every relationship, there's a subtle power game going on. We learn what's okay to do with this person and what's not okay. If we say that they don't mean harm, but subconsciously we do this to each other, we test waters, we test boundaries. And if you're okay with me being late, the next time I know that I'm okay being late with you, right? Next time I'm gonna be even later to your appointment because I know that you wouldn't care, you wouldn't mind. And it just creates a vicious cycle because maybe deep down we really mind, we are just afraid to protect our boundary. And when we do this, when we further abandon ourselves, we lower our self-esteem. We have weaker boundaries, we have weaker relationship with ourselves and with other people, which is a determining factor for a happy and satisfying and fulfilling life. All right, everyone, I hope I explained this well. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up. If you wanted to see more videos like this, please subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.